Today is Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Welcome to the Southbridge School Committee meeting. Please join the school committee in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Agenda item number two is public input. Is there anybody from the public who would like to address the school committee this evening? Seeing none, we'll call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Congdon? Present. Mr. Lebo? Present. Dr. Page? Present. Mrs. Donovan? Present. Mrs. Quinney? Present. Mr. Abrahamson? Present. Mrs. McLaughlin? Present. All present? Thank you. Agenda item number five is approval of minutes. Uh, agenda item 5A is the regular school committee meeting minutes of August 12, 2014. The minutes of this meeting were previously disseminated. Are there any correction to the minutes? If there are none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as written? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Abrahamson. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Olivo. Any further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Oliva? Yes. Dr. Page? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Abrahamson? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. All yes. Thank you. Next um, are the Committee of the Whole minutes from August 20th, 2014. These minutes have been disseminated. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, is there a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Mr. Abrahamson makes the motion. Second. Se seconded by Mrs. Congan. If there's no further discussion, seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Dr. Page? Abstain. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Abrahamson? Yes. Mrs. Congan? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Six yes and one abstention. Thank you. Uh, next is the approval of minutes of the regular school committee meeting, our last meeting, August 26, 2014. These minutes were previously disseminated for review. Are there any correction to the August 26th minute? Seeing none, may I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Abrahamson makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Congdon. If there's no further discussion, seeing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Abrahamson? Yes. Mrs. Congdon? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Dr. Page? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. All yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Next under chairperson's announcements. Um, the first three items uh, under school, the first three items I'm going to talk about are housekeeping items. And the first of those is that the first three items under school committee actions are votes to waive the readings of policies JII, JJH, and JJHR. These actions should have included the words and adopt after third reading. Uh, without objection and by unanimous consent, the words and adopt will be added to those actions so that we don't have to revisit, we don't have to go through the process of amending the motions individually. Does anybody object? Mrs. Quinney? Uh, Madam Chair, just point of information. Mm -hmm. Are we on uh, school committee actions A, B, and C? Yes. Um, it does not say to waive the reading? On my agenda. Uh, that's correct. Um, well, then I guess we're going to have to go through and when we get to those motions, uh, address them then. Okay, so strike that. Um, so well, the, yeah. are you set? Well, I was just going to say that we could vote to change them to say third reading and um, adoption after third reading. You know, I had originally actually had that and then I changed that. Um, so um, we certainly could do that. So again, um, Mrs. Quinney is, do you want to handle that when we get to it then? Sure. Okay, we'll handle it when we get to it. I'm sorry about that. 
The second announcement is there's a typographical error on agenda item 13A. JICI should read possession or use of weapons, not possession of use of weapons. So we're just going to make that correction. And also there's an addendum to the meeting agenda which was posted earlier today. Um, we will be returning to open session after executive session regarding the MOA between SEA Unit C and the Southbridge School Committee. So the maker of the main motion can determine the language depending on the intent of his or her motion. Um, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, next, I would just like to say that tomorrow night the school committee is convening as a committee of the whole as a follow-up to our retreat last Saturday. Um, we'll be convening for the purposes of establishing operating protocols, determining procedures for more effective meetings, centered on student achievement, and finalizing some details relative to the superintendent's evaluation. This meeting will take place in room M100 uh, in the Colab Administrative Building at 7.30 p.m. Um, and regarding the retreat, members during uh, will have an opportunity to share their thoughts and reflections of the retreat under new business later this evening. I think it's important that everybody have an opportunity to share what they took away from that, um, that meeting. Finally, Hyde Tools will be installing solar panels on their building and trees along the border with Eastford Road School must be removed as part of the process. This was previously agreed to by the former town manager and former superintendent. In the interest of public safety, it was decided that access to Eastford Road School will be prohibited this coming weekend, September 13th and 14th. They're gonna close access to the school. That is the end of my announcements this evening. We'll move on to agenda item number seven, reports. This evening, we do have a representative of the Student Advisory Committee joining us. I'd like to welcome Cameron Boisvert to our meeting tonight, and I will turn the floor over to him. Welcome, Cam. Thank you. Southbridge Middle High School's homecoming will be held on September 26th. Mr. Carrero is looking into the Student Council Conference, which will be held in Cape Cod for the Student Council members. The first National Honor Society meeting will be held tomorrow, the 10th at 7 a.m. We will be setting up our peer tutoring schedule and discussing our events for the upcoming year. Saturday, September 20th, will be our fall car wash, which will be held from 12 to 4 p.m. It costs $5 to get your car washed. Last year, we raised $350 with the wash, and this year we aim to get more. We will also be electing a new vice president because our current one has transferred schools. Open house will be on the 18th. There will be musical performances and various clubs. Parents will follow the schedules of their child. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to agenda item number eight, school committee reports. A report of the curriculum subcommittee. Mrs. Donovan, do you have anything? Thank you, Madam Chair. There is no report. However, I would like to announce that our next meeting will be held on Wednesday, September 24th at 6.30 p.m. in room M100. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll report on the policy subcommittee. The subcommittee meetings of September 3rd was rescheduled and will take place tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. in room M100 of the Colab Administrative Building. Topics on our agenda tomorrow night include the um, school food service and meal policies, the possession and use of weapons policy, the commemoration of school facilities policy, the use of school facilities uh, fee schedule, and transportation policies. Meeting is open to the public. For a report on negotiations, I turn to Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. As previously stated, we will um, be coming back from executive session to um, ratify or not ratify the MOA with the SEA. And there's no current negotiation subcommittee meeting scheduled this time. Thank you. For family and community engagement, Mrs. Congdon. Thank you, Madam Chair. The um, Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee met last evening in room M100 on 25 Cole Ave. Members present were myself, Mr. Abrahamson, and Mr. Levo. Others present were um, Mr. Latoy, Principal of Chowton Street School, Maria Fontaine, the Family Liaison at Chowton Street School, Margaret Morrissey of the Jacob Edwards Library, Jasmine Rivas of U Inc., PTA board members, co-president Sandra Aponte and Emily Olivo, co-vice president Jen Gentilly, Shielding Canoyer of the Civic Scholar Program, and parent Erin Quinney. 
We approved the minutes from the August 11th meeting unanimously. Second, we discussed the month of October being the month of the young adolescent. Mr. Abrahamson explained October is the month of the young adolescent, an annual international collaborative effort of education, health, and youth-oriented organizations. The month of the young adolescent brings together a wide range of organizations to focus on the needs of this important age range, ages 10 to 15. Educational organizations across the state have committed to getting the message out. Community members then had the opportunity to share ideas or recommendations for the month of the young adolescent. Mrs. Olivo stated that the month of the young adolescent is also about the importance of parents being knowledgeable about young adolescents and being actively involved in their lives, the understanding that healthy bodies plus healthy minds equals healthy young adolescents, the realization that the education young adolescents experience during this formative period of life will, in large measure, determine the future of all citizens, and the knowledge that every young adolescent should have the opportunity to pursue his or her dreams and aspirations, and post-secondary education should be possible a possibility for all. Ideas that were shared by members in, um, at the table were holding a kickoff party to promote ages 10 to 15 students and families, holding parent and student activities, having students and parents go to a ropes course to learn about teamwork and working together, including local places of worship throughout the community to promote the importance of adolescence, having faculty members bring in photos of themselves and do a kind of guess who, have local businesses hold an open house, have open recreation times at places like the Y, involve local medical facilities to hold medical screenings for adolescents and their families, have an information night at the schools specific to topics, community gardens, a mentor program, have community members visit or volunteer at the middle school, have the town proclaim October, the month of the young adolescent, have an article in the newspaper, school website, TV, or PTA newsletter. Have karaoke in the lunchroom to showcase the talent of ages 10 through 15. Have academic projects that these students can present. A peer leader program. Have community leaders come in to mentor these students. Incorporated in with Bullying and Domestic Prevention Awareness Month and Hispanic Heritage Month, which is also in October. Hold a cooking class for ages 10 through 15. Hold an essay contest. The theme being who I am and who I want to become possibly kick off a movie of That's What I Am, or do a poetry reading, um, have the middle schoolers create t-shirts, have a motivational speaker come in and speak about self-esteem, or have peers speak. Other ideas that were, um, ideas were all shared and it was recommended to forward them on um, to the middle high school administration and possibly have the student council come up with things they would like to see or have. Um, West Street School and Chowton Street School could work together to plan something and the Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee could share these ideas with the community and help facilitate in any way. Um, we next discussed the month of November being Family Literacy Month and Parent Volunteer Month. It was mentioned that the West Street School and um, Trouton Street School will be promoting parents to volunteer at the schools during open house next week. The Middle High School, um, West Street School and Trouton Street School will be partnering with the library during open house to help families learn more about the Jacob Edwards Library and be able to obtain library cards. Other ideas for initiatives were community members coming in to read to the students, giving, go giving golden paws to parents and holding a drawing for all the parents to possibly win a prize, such as maybe a membership um, to maybe the YMCA having a bingo night or a lunchtime bingo with words to promote literacy, having a story hour at night at the schools where kids could wear their pajamas, holding a reading contest, holding a book drive. It was also discussed to have an author come and speak and the PTA uh, might be willing to help sponsor that. Uh, Mr. Abrahamson recommended discussing our next agenda item um, at our next sub subsequent meeting. And then during member forum, Mr. Olivo thanked all who attended the meeting. Um, the meeting was adjourned um, a little bit after 8. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 6th at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you. Did that meeting adjourn at 8 last night or 8 this morning? <laughs> you guys were busy. <laughs> that was a long meeting. Good job. Thank you. Um, the next report is a report of the SPED PAC liaison, Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. The SPED PAC is having a fundraiser. It is a paint and sip social, which will be held on September 27th at the Knights of Columbus. The cost is $35. The SPED PAC will um, receive 15 of that $25. 
If you are at all interested, you can call the SPED PAC and ask for Jessica to reserve a seat. That number is 508-344-4055. And the paint and sip is kind of like those places that they have in Sturbridge and you go, they show you how to make a particular painting and give you all the paints and the canvas and then you can partake of soda, Shirley Temples or anything else your heart should desire at the Knights of Columbus. So again, call Jessica if you'd like, if you're interested at 508-344-4055 and that's September 27th, $35 is the cost. The SPED PAC survey is still open to parents and they'd appreciate parent input. And that, you can find the survey at southbridgespedpac.com. And their next meeting is scheduled for September 18th at 6 p.m. in room M100. And that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is presentations. We have a review of the summer school program. Mr. Osborne. Okay. Um, I believe you all have before you a uh, summary of the 2014 non-SPED uh, summer school programs. It's a, an information sheet. Um, <coughs> so for all four programs uh, that were non-SPED, um, students received both free lunch and free transportation to and from uh, those locations. Um, the two locations included West Street School and the Middle High School. Uh, the first program was the summer enrichment program. We enrolled 90 students entering grades one to six. So students who had finished kindergarten through grade fifth um, were selected for that, were, were offered the opportunity to be in that program. Predominantly um, selected by teachers and principals as students who could benefit from a boost during the summer. Um, Typically the program ran five weeks, July 7th to August 7th, um, one teacher and one paraprofessional per classroom. Um, focus was on math and literacy skills. Um, there was an ELL support program. Uh, we had four, about 40 students in that across three classrooms. Uh, same duration, five weeks. Um, the focus was language acquisition and literacy for both of those programs. Uh, predominantly students who were chosen uh, who were in levels one to three in ELL. Uh, then there's credit recovery. Uh, credit recovery also ran five weeks. Uh, it served about 44 students, uh, anywhere from grade six to 12. Um, one teacher per classroom, eight total classrooms uh, with a variety of classes, uh, typically based on anticipated need, um, things like that. Um, worth noting, the enrichment program was funded through Title I, the ELL program through Title III and Title I, a combination of funding. Um, credit recovery was funded first through student tuition and then backstopped with some Title I funds to help support that. Um, then finally, MCAS support, um, that's a program uh, to provide support to students who could use a lift in MCAS. And that ran for, um, I apologize, it did not go until July 247th. It went until July 24th. It started, it, it began with the other programs, finished July 24th. It only ran three weeks. Um, focus there was very specifically on the ELA and math portion of the MCAS for those students who needed assistance. That was funded through uh, a small grant, which is the 625 grant. That's a uh, uh, grant specifically earmarked for this purpose, as well as some Title I funds. Um, it's worth noting that there, there wasn't a formal attendance policy in the enrichment, the ELL, or the MCAS program. There were a lot of students who had vacations planned, things like that, that came up. Um, it wasn't specifically to make up for any classes or make up for anything. It was an opportunity for them to, to seek additional assistance. It was very well attended, however. Um, we, we typically had 90% attendance. We had a lot of students um, enroll even at the last minute. Um, and we managed to find space for all of them. Um, credit recovery was much more closely monitored by the teachers, uh, predominantly. Um, so they had a limit of two absences uh, with work that was required to be made up. 
We did have a couple of exceptions that were handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, emergencies that came up, family emergencies, personal emergencies. Um, we only had one student who ended up terminated based on absences. That was a student who simply didn't show up after the first week. Um, and every effort to try to contact him was futile. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Osborne? Mrs. Donovan? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, through you to Mr. Osborne, I have three questions, Aaron. Um, my first question is, uh, we, you provided the number of students that were enrolled for each of the four programs. Just doing quick math, I came up with 184 total. Is that, will we bound, was that number um, based on what the grants were allowed? Do they only allow a certain enrollment and do we have to follow that or is this just the amount of students that we addressed or that we found that needed these enrichment programs? Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't specific to the grant. We could have 1,000 students, but then we'd have to pay for enough teachers to pay for, <laughs> for those 1,000 students. So we sent out a certain number of targeted invites based on um, some guesstimates. Uh, I talked to some people who ran prior summer programs um, and and realize that return, given return rates, things like that, that we'd, we'd want to send out about twice as many invites as we expected for students. Um, I did do a second round of invites on a couple programs where we didn't quite have the numbers at the end. So we did send out some later invites that were intended to fill some programs that needed some more bodies or that could, could take more bodies. I mean, we wanted them to be as full as possible. Okay, thank you. Um, my second question was, how do we, as a, a school committee or as a district, how do we know if these programs were successful academically? Mm -hmm. um, we know that the kids were targeted um, and yes. wanted to provide mm -hmm. those students that needed the most enrichment the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So part A of my question is, how do we know if they were successful? Because I was wondering, is there any type of summative assessment that's done after these five weeks, or is there any way to track these students when they do take their MCAS scores to find out if that enrichment mm -hmm. actually did help them. Yes. We know who they are. We can track them if we want to, and I, I, we can absolutely look at doing that. We can check MCAS scores. Um, students did go home with a summary to parents of what they had done during the summer. But no formal assessment. There, there was no, no formal formal assessment. There okay. was no MCAS for this or final exam. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? Mrs. Quinney? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just building off of what Mrs. Donovan said, mm -hmm. I think if kids were targeted based on, mm -hmm. I would guess, like ANET scores and maybe mm -hmm. Dibbles and those mm -hmm. sorts of things, those same kids are going to be, that took those in the spring, are going to be taking those assessments again in the fall. Mm -hmm. So that might be a good gauge for us if mm -hmm. maybe we could see that information, mm -hmm. how kind of it played out, as opposed to sure. now they've gone a year with all lots of other factors might be in play. Just, I think, to for us to look at the budget and how we're targeting these kids and ensuring that they are getting, we're getting our bang for their buck and they're getting the, their investment of time and their parents' time is well worth their time in summer school would be, I think, helpful. And I just had one other question regarding credit recovery. Mm -hmm. It says that there were eight total classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, is phys ed not counted as a classroom? Because there are nine things listed. Um, it is counted as a classroom. Some were combined. I was going to say which ones um, were combined. English 10th and 11th combined. Um, uh, we actually had uh, middle school math was divided into six and seven and eight and then eight as okay. two separate classes. I just kind of grouped those together. So there actually were more literal classes than are listed here. Um, so there were more combined rooms. Excellent. And yes. then my last question was mm -hmm. regarding French one. Mm -hmm. That was tuition free, correct? Yes, absolutely okay. tuition free. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on this side? Anybody on this side? Mrs. Condon? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple of questions. How did we ident through you to Mr. Osborne, how did we identify the students for MCAS support, those ten students in mm -hmm. grades six through ten? Um, through their MCAS scores. 
Um, so staff looked at MCAS scores, students who, who needed assistance specifically in ELA and math, um, contacted the uh, families um, by phone. We actually drew some luck in that we had some students who were taking credit recovery in ELA or math. Um, in either the morning, in, in the first, it was the credit recovery was broken into two sessions. So in some cases, we had some students who were taking, um, say, math in the morning or in the first block, but nothing in the second block. So they actually were able to pull some of those students in if they qualified. So they were able to, to kind of add some, some numbers there. Um, and then only in grades six through 10, out of all of those students, we only found 10 that were for MCAS support yeah, that we could a lot, get? A lot of them were already in, in credit recovery <laughs> and programs like that. So it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a hard track to get them in summers sometimes. Thanks, Pat. I believe as we move forward, forward we will get more students to come for these programs. Um, we, with our MCAS scores being low and we had some great bumps this year, as soon as they're out of embargo, we can take a look at those. But I believe this might have been the first time that we offered this in the summer, at least that I can tell. So um, I, I believe we will build motivation as we go. So I think the fact that we started this program this year is what we're most proud of than the number, because we certainly want it to be more. Thank you. That would lead to my next question. Um, how can we improve these programs, ways that we can improve sure. these programs for summer school action items that we can take mm -hmm. for next year? Very good question. Well, <laughs> I, I think that I can probably answer, if you don't mind, more than two. Yes. Um, to a certain point, we advertised this late. I think with all of us being new last year, we were surveying the district to see what we had and we didn't have, and at times we were a little behind the eight ball, I guess, and, and we're going to own that. This year, going forward, we, we have a new high school guidance counselor, for instance, who has already um, found the students, as, as we can tell, as best from our MCAS that we can see, of those students who are needing it. And so we will monitor them throughout this year. And so for the summer, we will do our recruiting all year and not just sort of in the final hour of June. And, uh, you know, part of that, as I have said, we've had to survey the district. We've had to see what our needs are. And, you know, anytime you make a hypothesis, you have to do your research to see if it's true. And that's what we've spent a lot of time doing. So we're certainly going to spend a lot more time recruiting. And we're going to spend a lot more time this year making students feel welcome and making them want to participate in these programs. Thank you. That concludes my question. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Set. Moving on, do we have any report um, from the finance director? Um, I have two items. Um, the first uh, is last night there was a town council meeting, and at that town council meeting, um, they uh, did in fact appropriate the capital monies that were uh, agreed to as part of the budget. So the town will be uh, taking those items, um, we'll be getting account numbers for those, and we'll be able to make those capital purchases. Um, that includes uh, the vans, the servers, and the copiers that I believe we've discussed in the past. Um, second, uh, we have received an extension for the end of year report. That gives us until October 31st to complete and submit the end of year report to DESE. And that's it. Um, I just want to say I did have the opportunity to watch the town council meeting last night, and I want to thank um, all the councilors for their support, first and foremost. But I just wanted to mention, too, that uh, town councilor Clements was, I thought she did a very good job of explaining um, to the newer councilors in particular um, why this action was taken or why it was necessary outside of the oper school operating budget. So I want to thank her for that. Anything else? There. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have agenda item number 11, which is report of the superintendent, Ms. Gardner. Thank you. Um, tonight, I would like to welcome pastors Wayne and Yvette Gallagher. If you would come up to the podium, please. Right up here. Um, can I just use the microphone here? Or should I go over? I'll just do it here. You can hand it to me. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Mrs. McLaughlin, for helping me. Um, this is actually kind of a, a year late, but also this year as well. Last fall, um, super, the former superintendent, Nimrico, was contacted by Wayne and Yvette, who wanted to help us by being community stewards, and they offered us 200 backpacks for elementary and kindergarten students that were absolutely full of school supplies. And because all of our students do summer reading, we thought that for the elementary students that it would be a wonderful thing if we gave our students who completed their summer reading a backpack. So last year we had a few students short, which we managed to find backpacks for them. But this fall, Pastor Wayne and Yvette contacted us again, and they had gotten 250 backpacks full of school, school supplies, some really neat things that made students really excited. And last year I was at the presentations, this year I could not go, but it was so exciting to see students opening these up, being so excited and ready to use the things that were in there. Um, and, I, and I'd also like to say that, you know, they came in just as, as concerned community members, as good stewards of this community, and we were just very excited that you helped us again. And Ms. McLaughlin is right behind you, and we would like to present you with a certificate of appreciation for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, briefly say that it's an honor to us that you guys would entrust us to be able to come into the schools. Uh, we know how much you value the children and their education, and we are uh, sort of new to the town, so for, for you to entrust us and trust our efforts to come into the school system and, and interact with the children and reward them for their efforts, efforts during the summer uh, reading program uh, means a lot to us, so we just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to do that, and we look forward to doing much more in the community, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was exciting to see those backpacks and to see students getting them. Um, next on my list is just a hiring update. We had two very recent, within the past week, um, resignations. One was a high school, I'm sorry, a middle school ELA teacher. Ms. Earls is already interviewing for that, so we will have that filled very, very soon. On Monday, we had an elementary sped special education teacher resign, and this summer when we were doing um, our interviews, we had some very qualified candidates that we did not offer positions to, and so I think that we're going to have a very easy time filling that position, and it will be filled very soon. Also this week, our kindergarten beginning was very, very exciting. Students came in, they were ready to go, teachers were ready for them, and so that was exciting for us this week. Last Friday, I received an email from the DESC. Our accelerated improvement plan was not only accepted by the DESC, but it was given a very high rating, showing that if we fulfill that, we will be well on our way to getting out of level four. Thursday, we have an AIP team meeting, which when we rewrote our AIP starting last February, and I believe I've mentioned this before, we pulled in our IRSs, our academic deans, and some long-standing teachers who have been in Southbridge, who have been high performers. So we pulled together the, the kind of history of Southbridge along with where we are now and where we want to go, and so we're excited about our AIP. We have a meeting with the DESC on September 19th where we will present our quarterly report which runs from June until September. They will take back our findings and we will have a report back from them in late October, early November, and at that point we would like to, to make a presentation. But prior to that, I believe we will roll out the AIP at some point. It will be rolled out in the schools in the next two to three weeks so that all teachers know. Every school will write an improvement plan that focuses on some of the objectives and some of the activities from the accelerated improvement plan, and we will present those to you as well to approve. The Ombudsman program, our new program that is going to be housed at Cole Avenue, it's a program that 
will provide for non-traditional students or students who don't do well in the traditional school setting, but it will also be our program that will adhere to the new law that ex even students who are ex expelled or suspended still have a right to public education. It's a program that comes in, it's self-sufficient. They have currently hired the teachers that they need. The building is ready and for this program, we recognize students who would benefit from this and who will graduate from high school at a higher rate than if they were in the more traditional setting. We are identifying those with that. We have to meet with their parents, explain what the program is so that we get the entire family buy-in. We will have our students in this program by October 1st, and I believe that we will have some students in there prior to that, but, but our full operation will be October 1st. Another item is that one of the things that the former superintendent did was to take a good look at transportation and see where we were losing money and we bought some of our own vans. And one of our new vans is now en route. We have a driver for it and the driver has been taking some of our out of district students. So that was one thing that we were kind of slow on finding drivers and so I guess I would ask if anyone is interested in driving a van has um, I think it's a class 7 license and 7 D thank you um, we would really love if you could um, contact our special education office we have some great jobs for you and um, again I would just like to say that we've had a very very strong start of school we've had a few um, slip-ups but I think that we've had an opportunity from those to learn something um, last week I believe School committee member Congdon contacted me about some bad milk at West Street School and it gave us opportunity to check on why that was and Gorelick Farms admit that they had made a mistake but it also gave us an opportunity for us to talk to our children in the elementary schools about you know, if, if they get something that doesn't taste good or doesn't smell good or, or doesn't look good, what their opportunity is to talk to a teacher or talk to an adult. So I think that we took something that could have been negative and I think that we turned it into a positive and I think that that's what we try to do and we continue saying that we have our eye on excellence and we want every student every day to have a great learning experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions, Mrs. Donovan? Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to um, Superintendent uh, Gardner, I just have one question um, relative to the AIP. Um, you mentioned that all schools will write in a, their own improvement plan. Who will be the author of that? Is it just administration or IRS or who will participate in that, that writing? Every school has an instructional leadership team comprised of the IRSs and members that they identify as, as people who will be able to help really push a mission of their school. So it, it will be a team effort. And then will that plan be approved by you or Ms. Stanton to ensure that it is in line with the overall AIP for the district? We have to submit those to the DSA, and I think it's... So uh, they will have the final approval? And... and uh, the approval is, is pretty minimal. We submit them so we don't get a lot back in writing about them, but you know, it's certainly something that, that we, okay. it's an unfunded mandate and they don't spend a lot of time on them, but certainly because we have an accelerated improvement plan, it's something that we want to do well. And it'll be all four of our buildings that will participate in that? Yes, it will. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mrs. Quinney. Chair, through you to uh, Ms. Gardner. The, regarding the school improvement plans, the school councils will play a significant role in that, I'm sure? The school council should play an important role in that as well in taking a look at it and approving it and asking questions and making sure that it makes sense to someone that would read it. I think sometimes in education we get caught up in the educational lease of what it's supposed to mean, so I think that you know that's a great place for them to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. All set. Okay. Um, agenda item number twelve: are school committee actions. These are the um, items I was referring to earlier during chair announcements. Mr. Abrams. Yes. I believe that the way these uh, unanimous uh, consent requests are worded takes care of the issue that you were talking about earlier. Okay. Madam Chair, <clears throat> I ask unanimous consent to waive the third reading of agenda item 12A and adopt amended policy file JII student complaints and grievances. Thank you. 
No second is needed. However, if any member objects to this, they have an opportunity to object or if they want to discuss it. Otherwise, by unanimous consent, the agenda item would be approved. So, anybody? Um, seeing none, the reading is waived. The uh, agenda item 12A, file JII, student complaints and grievances, is hereby adopted. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. I ask unanimous consent to waive the third reading of agenda item 12B and adopt amended policy JJH, field trips, overnight travel, and international travel. Does any member want to speak to this policy or discuss it? Um, if there's no objection, the reading is waived and the policy will be adopted. And that is policy JJH, field trips, overnight travel, and international travel. Madam Chair? Thank you. Yes. I ask unanimous consent to waive the third reading of agenda item 12C and adopt amended policy file JJH-R, student travel regulations. Again, I would ask if any member has an objection. If there's none, the reading is waived by unanimous consent and adopted by unanimous consent, and that is on file JJH-R, student travel regulations. Thank you. And now we move on to unfinished business. Madam Chair? Mr. Abrahamson? I ask unanimous consent to waive the second reading of agenda item 13A, policy file, JICI, possession or use of firearms. Does any member here have an objection or want to discuss this item? If there is, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just for clarification, I believe that the file JC, JICI is possession or use of weapons rather than firearms. Um, that is correct. That is correct. So therefore, I don't know if Mr. Abrahamson would like to reward his request. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Abrahamson? Yes, Madam Chair. I ask unanimous consent to waive the second reading of agenda item 13A, policy file, JICI, possession or use of weapons. Is there any discussion to be objection? If there is none, then by a unanimous consent, we've achieved the second reading of policy JICI, possession or use of weapons. This will also be discussed at the policy subcommittee meeting uh, tomorrow evening. We'll undergo further review. Thank you. Mr. Abrahamson. Madam Chair, I ask unanimous consent to waive the second reading of agenda item 13B, policy file FF, commemoration of facilities. Thank you, Mr. Abrahamson. Is there any member that wants to speak to this policy? If not, the second reading was waived. Thank you. By unanimous consent, the second reading has been waived. Next, we have agenda item 14, which is new business. The next regular school committee meeting will be held September 23rd, 2014 in council chambers at 7, uh, at 7 p.m. Um, and next on the agenda, agenda item 14 is a discussion and recap of the September 6, 2014 school committee retreat. Um, this is an opportunity to allow members to share their thoughts and reflections on the retreat that was held the other day. Um, that went from probably 8.30 to about, through, it began actually at 9 and ended about 3.30. So um, I'd like to start on this end if I would. I don't know if um, there's anybody on this side, Mr. Olivo, if you'd want to go or? Uh, yes, I just uh, would like to say that during this weekend, this retreat, it was a great time. Um, I learned a lot. I was able to um, gain a lot of knowledge in in respect to knowing our roles as a school committee, uh, knowing the roles of the administration and be able to separate those roles. Um, it was a great time uh, and I would like to say thank you to uh, Ms. Donovan for setting up the food as well. Uh, it was well received. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Olivo. Dr. Page? Uh, yeah, I'd like to um, uh, agree with Chris uh, in some respect. I'm not sure it was a great time, uh, <laughs> but, but it certainly was productive. Um, uh, we were able to really learn a lot about uh, some 
uh, particular areas that other school committees and these are you know sort of school districts that have uh, been sort of ranked as very successful school districts and how the school committee operates and so we have a lot to consider in terms of making some modifications to our operating procedures and I think that's going to be very very productive and enable us to be a much more productive body uh, we got I felt like we have a good uh, degree of camaraderie uh, among us as members and I think that everybody's poised and positioned and wants to work uh, well together and productively and it was nice to have an opportunity to go around and sort of set our objectives uh, overlying ob uh, over all objectives for what we expect as school committee members to accomplish and it was very nice to see there's a lot of alignment among us to, to those objectives so I'm looking forward to a very productive year thank you well said, thank you. Mrs. Congdon? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also wanted to thank Mrs. Donovan for putting together a nice spread, but um, it's, it was nice for Dorothy Presser to come out and um, help us kind of go through these things and retrain us. Last year I, I had the opportunity to attend Charting the Course and attend another um, series of the district governance project with Ms. Presser, but it kind of refocuses things. It reminds you of your role as a school committee member, which I think a lot of people in the community sometimes don't know, especially when complaints come in to us as members, that there is a chain of command that um, if someone speaks to you, you're only one member of the school committee. The only time you are, you're pretty much an individual, the only time that you are um, a part is when the co school committee is convened as a group. But, you know, it just kind of refocuses your brain and um, goes through that chain of command. So if someone complains to us as a school committee member, we tell them to go through that appropriate chain of command. Talk to the teacher. If, if they're not getting anywhere with the teacher, talk to the principal or whoever that complaint is. And it goes up that line of, of command and then talks to the superintendent and then it comes to the school committee. So it's not that you run to the school committee. Our role as a school committee member is fiscal responsibility, policy, and overseeing the superintendent. So it, it just kind of refocuses that, and I just wanted to reiterate um, that, as well as kind of setting your mission and goals as a committee. And I also wanted to just relay to the public that that meeting was very nice for me as a school committee member, as part of this group. Everyone's voice is heard, no one's shutting you down. We have a mutual sense of respect, and that goes a long way when you are um, overseeing the superintendent and helping to run a school district. So, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Over here, um, Mrs. Donovan, would you like to? Yep, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one of the greatest things that I took away from this is that I felt that we are returning to the dais as a, um, a with the with the strong potential for being a high achieving school committee and i say that because you know, throughout that whole workshop, it was very obvious, like Dr. Page said, we're all on the same page and we all have a vision of high expectation, not just only of ourselves, but of our superintendent, which will include trickling down to our administrators on the district level, our district leadership team, and right down into the classroom. So we have a vision of high expectations. We're focused on accountability, accountability for ourselves, accountability for Ms. Gardner, and accountability to um, our students as well as our community as a whole. We recognize that the essential um, duty is to, uh, one of our essential duties is to foster strong relationships, not only among ourselves, but again with the superintendent and with the rest of the community as well as our educational community. Um, we all realize and recognize the importance of data and the role that data will p play in our progress as we work through monitoring our progress with our AIP. Um, we were extremely excited to hear that our AIP has been accepted and we all came to a unanimous consent that uh, the AIP is our primary focus. Student achievement is our primary focus and one of the things that I wanted to mention at that workshop is that sometimes there's so much going on around us, it's easy to get caught up in the minutia and to get derailed about things that at the time may seem important, but when you take a step back and look at them big picture wise, they may not be as important as 
as you think they are because the most important thing that we need to focus on in this school district is that accelerated improvement plan, fostering student achievement and removing our status from level four. And we also decided that, or uh, I feel, that we recognize our roles as leaders and as such we need uh, collaboration, trust and respect among ourselves as a group and we clearly do have that and I want to thank my fellow committee members for um, coming to, to the table with that. So I'm very excited. Um, I thank Ms. Gardner for her presence there, for um, Dorothy Presser from M MASC for her presence there. And I also wanted to specially thank um, Mike and Edward from our technology departments. They were most gracious to meet with me and help me with setting up the technology so that we could have our PowerPoint presentation, and also to Kelvin. Kelvin was a great help to me throughout um, throughout the day. So special thanks to those members of our school district. So, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. I too echo the sentiments of the rest of the committee. I think we are all individuals um, with our own thoughts and ideas, but I think collectively our focus is on student achievement and improving student achievement, and that was um, very clear on Saturday. Other things that I took away from the retreat itself were the superintendent evaluation cycle and how we can um, implement that to impact student achievement for um, our district as well as um, Ms. Presser discussed the impact of governance on student achievement. So the way in which we conduct ourselves, what our meetings are focused on, um, where we're putting our time and energy will have an impact on student achievement either for the positive or the negative. And I think that that sets a really high bar for us if our um, goal is to get out of level four and to see an increase in improvement in student achievement. Other things were our setting getting ready to set goals as a committee together and where our focus is and how we're going to move forward with that as a committee and ways in which we can be a more effective um, and functional board in order to continue to, as I've said many times, impact student achievement. I think that we are all aligned in our focus as a school committee and that the retreat provided an opportunity, um, as Ms. Congdon said, to set the stage for a very productive, respectful relationship moving forward. Although we might not all agree on everything all of the time moving forward, I think um, knowing that we're all focused on um, doing the best thing, best things in the interest of the students in our district was a great um, team building endeavor and moving forward will just set the stage as we continue to move forward as a committee over the next year. So I thank you all for Ms. Donovan for setting everything up, Ms. Presser for attending, and then everybody else for being present. I think if any one of us was missing, then a part of the puzzle would have been missing and would have been less productive than it was. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Mr. Abrahamson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one thing about going next to last is I can ditto everything that people said. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and I did have an opportunity to eat uh, pizza guilt-free. That doesn't happen very often. Um, yes, it was a very productive day and, and something uh, that as a new school committee person uh, I found very um, informative and I might say, uh, Mrs. Gong didn't mention charting the course. This is a good preliminary for me, uh, as uh, on Saturday I'm driving to Lenox for an eight-hour version of what we did. So, thank you. Have fun with that. Did you want to say anything about the retreat? Was, I don't, I don't uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Sometimes the thought of working your sixth day is not always fun, but it, it was a very, very informative day. And, and I've said this before, and I'm very sincere. Working with all of you on Saturday was, um, it made me very hopeful about where the school district is going and about the choices that we're going to make in the future. And I did feel like, Dr. Page, that you were exactly right, that there was a sense of, if not camaraderie, but a common mission that, that we will move forward to benefit all of the students in this town. And so I just, I thank you for that. I thank you for um, the professionalism that you exhibited all day. I, I thank you that you listened to Dorothy Presser and um, 
you know, again, I, I thank you for this opportunity to, to work in this district and to work with people who really sort of set aside any differences or any other ideas except for the, the task at hand, which is to improve student achievement. So I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll just have an opportunity to share my thoughts. Um, when you're elected to the school committee, all of a sudden you're thrust into a, a foreign world in a lot of respects. You're expected to be automatically, or some people expect you automatically to be experts on curriculum, finance, policy, law, special education, transportation. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, so the retreat was an opportunity to um, really hear about what our roles are vis-a-vis -vis especially the superintendent and the committee's charge is one of a, a governance in leadership and the superintendent is one of management and leadership and there is a, a great distinction there. Um, on August 26th I had the opportunity to address district staff and I went over very quickly what the difference in the roles uh, is and um, I don't think a lot of times that that's widely understood. I don't think I understood it necessarily before I became a member of the school committee, but I feel like I have a much better understanding of it now. Um, and um, I, some audience members that day have since approached me, approached me after that time and said that they found that information extremely helpful. So at some point, I don't want to maybe take up our time tonight, but at some point maybe really go over what the roles of the school committee versus the superintendent and district leadership is. That might be helpful. Um, I thought the retreat was, as everybody has said, a great team building exercise. I know there have been times um, since I've been serving uh, in this capacity that um, I felt like I've been rolling a boulder uphill and um, other people have been simultaneously pushing it down. Um, and that's hard. Uh, but the job is easier if there are many hands you know, on the boulder pushing it up in the right direction. And I feel like that's what we have now. There's a lot of people working uh, towards the same goal. Our retreat, though helpful, wasn't a one and done. Um, we didn't do it simply to check something off the list and say that we've done it. I think we all went into it and came out of it feeling like it has provided an opportunity for us to discuss our priorities and develop an operational framework that really helps um, solidify our focus on where it should be, a student achievement. And I sincerely thank everybody up on the dais um, that participated because I have, I have had respect for all of you all along, but I um, sincerely respect you for your insight, your candor, um, and for your commitment. Um, and I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, and now we have member forum. Is there any school committee member who would like just to discuss? Mr. Oliva. I would. Um, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you to all the faculty and staff, uh, administration and administration, uh, for the start of a good school year. Um, it's been well received in the community. I've, I've gotten reports from students and uh, reports from parents that there's a great feeling in the air. Uh, so thank you for your hard work and, you know, let's push, push on and, and continue uh, to have that kind of feeling in the community. Um, I would also like to say thank you to Pastors Yvette and, or Wayne and Yvette Gallagher um, for the backpacks, the donation of the backpacks. Uh, my son was a recipient of one of those backpacks and the excitement uh, when I came home from work on his face and the backpack and the stuff that came in the backpack was, um, it, he was just happy. So it was, uh, it was well received. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to say welcome to Cameron. It's nice to see that seat uh, occupied by uh, the Student Advisory Committee. Um, I would also like to uh, say thank you to, um, I'm sorry, not say thank you, but say good luck to the football teams that are playing this weekend against Tantasqua. Let's beat Tantasqua. And uh, again, to the other students who are participating in sports that have already started, uh, good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mrs. Conklin? Thank you, Madam 
Chair. I just wanted to wish um, preschool families well tomorrow on their first day. Good luck to all the parents sending their babies off to school. Um, I also wanted to just mention, um, now that we have th Mr. Boisvert here, um, that the school committee will start doing their monthly meetings with the Student Advisory Council. And I think right now we're scheduled to meet next Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Um, so I think that was sent out just to members this morning regarding that. Um, so each month we meet with um, members of the Student Advisory Council and they give us feedback on um, their views of things happening in the district and ways that we can improve policy for the school committee. Um, I also wanted to say that at last night's family and community engagement meeting, I purchased a um, Southbridge Pioneers card from a member of the sock girls soccer team for $10. And I had a chance last night to look at it. It's valid through <coughs> August 31st, 2015. And there are a lot of vendors on there, McDonald's, Fidel's, Fins and Tails, um, BT's Smokehouse, Brothers Pizza, Teddy G's, just to name a couple. So go find your athlete um, in your community or call the school and go purchase your $10 um, Southbridge Pioneers card. So thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> thank you very much. Mr. Abrahamson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I it's probably not a, a, a note of optimism here, but uh, it's been said to thine own self be true. So if I didn't express this feeling, uh, I wouldn't be true to myself. As my colleague Mrs. Congdon stated, a meeting of the Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee was held last evening. I wish to thank those members of the community who attended. The minutes read by Mrs. Congdon listed them. A topic that we discussed, discussed extensively was designating October as the month of the young adolescent. The young adolescent is defined as children from age 10 to 15 or, in another way, students in grades 5 through 8. It's hard to overestimate how crucial these years are in the social, emotional, and cognitive development of children. Studies show and experience proves that decisions made by children at this time can have long-lasting effects, both positive and negative. I was disappointed to note that with the exception of the principal of Charlton Street School, not one other administrator, either at the building level or district-wide, attended this meeting. I will simply point out that communication still took place. Silence and absence communicate loudly. I sincerely hope that those of us who may infer indifference on the part of our administrators are mistaken. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mrs. Quinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, wanted to echo Mr. Olivo's sentiments regarding the start of this school year. I have heard nothing but positive things. I think that there have been a few, hic uh, few, a few hiccups in the road. However, nothing um, like issues that we've had in the past. Fox 25 hasn't been on any of our buses this year. I think um, we're off to a great start. So thank you everybody who's been working very hard um, to make that happen, get the buildings open and get um, students off on the right start. And also um, wish all the preschoolers good luck tomorrow, but more so their parents. Sending um, your preschooler to school for the first time can be a bit of a challenge, especially if it's your youngest. I might have some experience in that tonight. Um, so good luck. I hope that every um, the first day of preschool is just as successful as was the first day of kindergarten and then the first day of opening in general. So thank you, and I think that is all. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mrs. Donovan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a few things that I'd like to say. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Cameron Boisvert. It's nice to, to see you. I know Cameron personally, but it, I'm excited to hear what you have to bring to the table, and um, I'm very glad to have you here. So welcome, Cameron. Um, I wanted to thank Mrs. Congdon and members of the West Street School Playground Committee. Last Wednesday was the dedication for the Michael A. Uh, Vesha Playground. 
There was a, a ton of people who attended from the community, from the state level, um, from the school committee, from town council. It was, it was a beautiful day for a beautiful person, and it, was, it went off without a hitch. So I wanted to thank the playground committee and once again congratulate and thank Mr. Vesher for uh, being such an integral part of this community and our education system. Um, I wa just wanted to remind families that this week coming up, well, next week actually, will be our open houses at our four schools. Tuesday the 16th will be for Eastford Road School. On Wednesday the 17th will be both Charlton Street School and West Street School. And the Southbridge Middle High School will be on Thursday the 18th. Um, just keep an eye out in backpacks or listen to automated phone calls on times and things like that. But make sure that your calendars are marked because it's important that you can go and see your classroom teacher and get a feel for the school. Everybody will will be there, and it's an it's a it's an important it's important evening for everybody. So mark your calendars. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in getting our AIP accepted. That is huge, tremendous news, exciting news. So thank you to Miss Gardner and all that are involved in getting that um, taken care of and accepted. Not only just accepted, but with a high rating. So there we go again with our high expectations of getting the job done and getting it done right. So thank you to all involved, and then finally once again to the gallery. Um, for their donation this evening, like Mr. Olivo's son, my daughter, also had um, received one of those backpacks and, again, was equally excited about And I was amazed at how much stuff was in there. So thank you. You know, there's still so many great people in this community that care about our schools and care about our kids, and um, we certainly need to recognize them and sincerely thank them. Uh, and that is all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we have a vote to go into executive session. This is agenda item 15, so we're going to go into executive session, or I'll entertain a vote to go into executive session to mm -hmm. number one. I gotta read them into the record. Okay. <laughs> Discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for union and non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the governmental body pursuant to chapter 30A, section 21A, part three. And to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body pursuant to chapter 30A, section 21A, part six, and the chair does so declare. So moved. So moved. Mr. Abrahamson Second. makes the motion, seconded by Dr. Page. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Quinney? Yes. Mr. Abrahamson? Yes. Mrs. Condon? Yes. Mr. Olivo? Yes. Dr. Page? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. The school committee will reconvene in open session after the conclusion of an executive session. We will be reconvening. Thank you. Good evening. Um, welcome back. Um, it is still September 9th, 2014. Um, we are returning from executive session. The time is 9.39 p.m. I note the presence of all the school committee members and the superintendent on the dais. And we will resume our agenda from the point of um, agenda item 15. Uh, we are on D, and this was uh, discussion about the ratification of the MOA between the uh, SEA Unit C and the Southbridge School Committee. Is there a motion? Mrs. Conga. Madam Chair, I make a motion to um, ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Southbridge Education Association Unit C Educational Assistance and the Southbridge School Committee as approved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mrs. Condon, seconded by Dr. Page to ratify the agreement as stated. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Abrahamson? Yes. Mrs. Condon? Yes. Mr. Olivo? No. Dr. Page? Yes. 
Mrs. Dunnigan? No. Mrs. Quinney? No. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. We have four yes and three no. Thank you. The motion carries by a four to three vote. Mrs. Co oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, just before we leave, I just wanted to give Mrs. Uh, Congdon an opportunity to make a clarification on the record about a statement made earlier this evening. Mrs. Congdon? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a statement um, regarding what Mr. Abraham had said in regards to the Family and Community Engagement Subcommittee. I wanted to apologize because it was my fault um, that um, staff from the middle school, high school did not come to the Family and Community Engagement meeting. Um, the librarian was CC'd and had replied back that she was not able to attend that evening. But when the email was sent out to um, principals and librarians, um, Melissa Earls was not put on that email. So I do apologize that didn't give her a chance to be able to attend the meeting without having um, been formally invited. So I just wanted to apologize to her. She did not have that opportunity to um, know about that meeting that evening. So thank you. Thank you very much. And now business is concluded. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Quinney, seconded by Mr. Abrahamson. Show of hands, please. All in favor. The meeting is adjourned.